and it's about that time when we get into the discussions we've been having here on love week and in studio with me i am not alone as we haven't been these last few days i have a very very special person with me he is a counselor and a media and communications consultant as well but as well a family man and an elder in this church watoto that's how i've known him I actually went to school with his children and didn't know that he was their dad for a long time i was telling him earlier on you've probably heard his name before welcome mr robbie muhumuza you're very welcome to the show thank you very much thanks for having me yes it's a pleasure to have you here i know that this year you are making 37 years in marriage yeah but while I was getting ready, I read up something about the day you proposed. Mm -hmm. And did she accept the very first time you proposed? Did she say yes? Um, no, the first time I proposed, she said, um, I wish I had come earlier. Um, I'm sorry if you come too late. And, uh, no, I'm sorry. Oh, wow. And uh, wow, that was one of the toughest times I've ever had in my life. At that time, I was staying at Doug Hammershaw Dock mm -hmm. on campus, Makere University. Yes. And she was staying in Mary Stewart Hall, which is called The Box. Okay. So I had walked over and had a cup of tea and then launched my portfolio, as we used to say. Uh -huh. And when she said no, the journey from Mary Stewart Hall, one part of campus, yeah. to um, Doug Hammershaw Dock was one of the longest journeys I've ever met. Wow. And I went home and I got a fever out of the blue, <laughs> even with, without any mosquitoes biting me. Wow. Wow. Is that what people would call hysteria today or was it something else? I think it was. Uh, <laughs> my temperature went up. Wow. But the doctor couldn't find any, malaria, any parasites and I knew what had caused it. But thank God uh, later on she said yes. Yes. And oh, 37 that's years later, here we are. When you received that letter of her telling you, saying, hi, oh, this other relationship ended, how did you feel? That was the happiest day <laughs> in my life, next to the wedding day. Yes, ah, that's beautiful. Well, some of us here have been rejected before and have never recovered. There's still hope. Um, <laughs> Mr. Robin's story tells us that there's still hope. But today, we want to get into something that's become a part of our society. It's, it's not new. I think from time immemorial, if we look into each of our families, we can see that Things have not always been as they should be and I put that in quotes because people would question that and we wanted to talk about we hear the blended families that I think it's a new term now calling it blended families what is a blended family thank you for that question blended family mm -hmm. the typical common uh, family is a man and a woman who get together they get married yeah. and they have biological children. That is the typical expected family. Yeah. But not all families are like that. Increasingly, there are families uh, which uh, we call blended. Mm -hmm. And the blended families are families where uh, the man had a previous relationship yes. and had children. The woman from a previous relationship had children. The two get together they get married yeah. and probably they have children so you and, and and there are many reasons why you can have blended families mm. uh, for instance in this covid lockdown yeah. we've had many girls becoming pregnant there's That's the issue of, of of girls getting pregnant and having children now the boys who've made them pregnant or men may not necessarily marry them so down the road yeah you know the the, the, the main response have moved on yeah. a few years down the road this young woman meets um, another young man or another man and they get married. Yeah. And the other child who was born before the wedding becomes part of the new family. Yeah. You also have instances where some people divorce. Mm -hmm. That's true. And then they remarry and they come along with, with the children. We have instances where one spouse passes away. Yeah. And, and the Bible says marriage is until death. So when your husband or wife passes away, uh, you are no longer in that marriage. The marriage is over yeah. and you are free to get married. And you could get married to somebody who is either single, also had children, had a wife, and uh, the wife died, leaving children. And now you, you, you are blending uh, the family. Now, the word blending, uh, I'm thinking of my favorite fruit in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> What's Smoothie. That? 
<laughs> Every time uh, I wake up in the morning, my favorite breakfast is you get a banana, you get a watermelon, yeah. you get a pineapple, you add in ginger, you add in put, beetroot, you put them in um, a blender. Yes. And crrr, crrr, you end up with a smoothie. Yeah, something now, new. Yes, that, the blended, the fruit has been blended. But sometimes you find this very stubborn beetroot that's very hard. So it's smoothie, but inside there, there are some of these carrots. Or, so, so a branded family is where you have husband, wife, with these children from all these relationships yeah. coming up to make one new family that's blended. But sometimes there are issues. They may not be as, as smooth as you could have expected. Yeah, that's very, very true. Um, I like the analogy that you've used of uh, the fruits in the morning and then you find the stubborn beetroot that doesn't exactly, you know. Um, but clearly that's not just something that happens. Sometimes it feels like even in the normal nuclear families, it, it's not, ideally it should be the smoothie, <laughs> right? The, the yes. nu- yeah, the nuclear family should be the, the normal thing. But sometimes you find that it's still not... You, the, the, those challenges that you find in in a blended family, you still find in in a in a nuclear family. So I think the question I'm trying to ask is this: Is there was there an original perfect design? You know the way we say God's design for family, like you said, it was I think husband wife. But is that something that applies today? That's the most ideal. Would the blended family can they actually be as good? As the original family, is it possible? Um, God's original design for family was the nuclear family. Yeah. One man, one wife, and the in a monogamous relationship until death do, do them part, yes. and God will bless them with uh, children. Yeah. But as we know, we live in a foreign world until Jesus Christ comes back, and yes. we there is a new world that comes. We live in a broken world that have other situations that come in. Yeah. And, and one of them is death. Yeah. I think the, the, the story of Naomi and Boaz, mm-hmm. you know, she had her first husband, uh, the husband died, the mother-in-law mm-hmm. <coughs> went back mm-hmm. to Israel, and then she ended up marrying again. Yes. And, and Jesus actually comes from that line. Yes, that's true. So it was in the original, but eventually something that's what happened. I, I was reflecting on this subject, and, and, and something, um, some interesting thought came to me, and that is Jesus Christ's own family. Yes. <laughs> was actually a blended family. Wow, that's true. Because if you remember, Mary was uh, betrothed to Mary Joseph. Yes. And they were going to have the traditional nuclear family. But before they could uh, get the wedding, uh, God says, send the Holy Spirit and said, hey, yes. you are going to have a baby. <laughs> and that is my son through the power of the Holy Spirit. Yes. And, and Joseph thought of, ah, but me, I'm, I'm, I'm a devout Jew and I must have the expected family. How can I marry a girl who is already pregnant? No, 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 no. This is a shame. The Holy Spirit said, no, God has given you a responsibility to take care of this child. My son will be in your family. You're not going to be the biological father, but you're going to be the adopted father of my son. And and, and another verse in the Bible, I think it's in Proverbs, says that God puts the lonely in families. And so the lonely could be a, a widow, or a widower, or an orphan, yeah. who now ends, ends up getting a stepfather, a stepmother. So it wasn't the ideal, but along the way in the foreign world, God does provide a second opportunity. You lost your first husband, God can give you a second yeah. husband. Wow. You lost your father, biological father, God can give you a new father when your mother gets married. Yeah. Or uh, you are born out of wedlock and your father is not interested in you or is even not known. God can give you a new father through when your mother gets married. Wow. So God gives these opportunities. I think we're talking about the love week. Yes, yes. Yeah, so God, uh, the first love may not have worked, but God could give you 
another relationship that's beautiful. and another family wow that's very beautiful let's get into a short break and then we'll get back and listen to more from elder Roby because i'm already understanding this blended family thing better and being more receptive to the term <laughs> as opposed to how i was before but we'll be back after these messages you playing for you at exactly 28 minutes after 11 a.m. and it's time for us to carry on with this conversation with Elda Roby who is telling us and talking to us about blended families before we went for the break he'd mentioned something that I found absolutely interesting the fact that Jesus you know Jesus was in a blended family I don't know if any of us had thought about it that way but for me that tells that there's something good about blended families where people who ideally wouldn't have something get placed in a situation where like Jesus had Joseph for a father and I wanted to ask you Elder Ruby at this point what are some of the advantages of blended families and then maybe after that you can also share what some of the disadvantages are that you've seen or experienced in your life yeah. thank you um, I was actually intrigued. I never usually think about Jesus as being in a branded family. But I was yeah. reading Mark chapter yeah. 6, verse 3. Yeah. And uh, it says Jesus had brothers and sisters. <laughs> we know I think about Jesus had sisters. Yeah. But Mark chapter 6, verse 3 mentions the brothers. James, mm -hmm. Joseph, Judas, and Simon, yeah. and sisters. Yeah. And, and we know that uh, Joseph was not the biological father, but he had adopt him. He was part of the, yes. of the family. Now, all, all families have uh, advantages and disadvantages. Yes. But the uniqueness of a blended family, given that uh, all the children in that family may not have the same biological mother or father, mm -hmm. but they are now part of the same family, bring some unique uh, advantages that you may not find in, in, in a nuclear family. And I want to mention some of them. Yes. Uh, one of them is that... Um, the, the, the individual who has had children and is not married, it can quite be lonely. Mm -hmm. And it can be lonely and you feel you want to experience the love of marriage or a partner and you don't have them. So when you have a blended family, when you eventually get married, then you can experience marital love yes. that you are missing either as a single person, single mother or single father, or as a widow or widower. Mm -hmm. So you get that love. And then the children uh, who don't have uh, a father or a mother, uh, when their parents get married, then they have the opportunity of love yeah. in a family setup. Yeah. Um, that is one advantage. You, you have love in a family setup. God created us to, to be in family. Yes. And sometimes, you know, we don't have family because of various reasons. Mm -hmm. And one of them could be, um, I already have children, or the woman, man has children, why should I? Or he lost his first husband. But when you get married, then you get the advantage of, of a loving family. Yes, that's true. The other um, advantage is that children can have a role model. Yeah. Again, God's idea is that a family should have a mother and a father. Yeah. Because the the mentor the children, uh, they discipline the children, they nurture the children differently. Yes. And so when you uh, get, when your parents remarry, um, then you can have a role model, you can have a father that you missed, you never had, or a mother that you never had. <coughs> um, or you could have siblings. Yes. Because uh, family is the first point of call. Yes. When you had an issue, when you have an issue, mm. You know, you can go to another place and they reject you, but home is a place you can always go to, and then you can find brothers and sisters. So if you didn't have brothers and sisters, uh, your parents, when they marry, you can have your brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. Then another advantage is that children can learn to be more flexible and how to relate with others who are different from them in society. Yeah. You sometimes have uh, families where they have only one child, <laughs> yes. And this child has no brother, has no sister, doesn't know how to share, doesn't know how to communicate. <coughs> they can end up being very selfish because yes. all their attention is only on them. Yes. And yet when they get into society, uh, school, workplace, church, <coughs> they need to learn to live with, with, with one another. But because they missed this, uh, because they're only children of a single parent, mm -hmm. uh, or the only child, 
um, they don't know how to do that. So this new family uh, that brings step sisters, step brothers, teaches them from a home setting yeah. how to relate with others, uh, which would be helpful in society. It increases their emotional intelligence. How do you relate successfully with other people who are different from you? Yeah. The other one is that um, they learn to deal with conflict. You can be sure that at home uh, there's going to be conflict. There are yeah. conflicts elsewhere in other families, but when the, the, the one you're conflicting with is also your biological uh, sibling, sibling or, yeah. there, there is another connection. In, in my language, you have a proverb that says that the, the, the leopard from your village <laughs> will eat you while gathering you together. <laughs> it will eat you, mean? it will gather you together, but the one who is not from your village will just scatter you into pieces. Oh. Because when brothers fight, another proverb says, when brothers fight, they keep pointing each other at the at the hole they might fall in. Okay. You are fighting, but if it's going to fall in a pit, you say, yeah, be careful, don't. Okay. <coughs> so um, we, we, when children are from a same father and same mother, th there is that affinity yeah. because they are biological parents. Sometimes when you share a mother, but the children are not, the other children are from your stepfather or stepmother sometimes, that bonding is not there. Yeah. So you learn how to deal with conflict, yeah. uh, even uh, with children who may not be biological yeah. with you, uh, which is important. Those before are you then carry on in that mm. regard, um, before you carry on, um, if there's a parent, probably a parent listening in who's wondering, saying, oh, um, I'm raising my child and we're having, we have a blended family, but I'm having trouble you know, getting these new siblings to actually be careful instead of letting your brother fall in the hole. I'm, I'm having trouble teaching them how to look out for one. What would you say to this parent, you know? Um, this parent, uh, yes, it's, it's, it's important to uh, help children learn. Yeah. Because if you were the only child, or you are two brothers, or you and your sister, and uh, you're happy with each other, you knew how to fight, you knew how to protect each other, suddenly you now have n new brothers and new sisters. That could be traumatic yeah. uh, for the children because they've gone to learn how to share. Yeah. And so expecting them to automatically embrace their new brothers and sisters may be asking too much. Mm. Um, so giving them time to relate, yes. to be friends, with your encouragement and the encouragement of their new father yes. would be important. Yes. So don't be too harsh on them that they are not coping. Uh, it, it's, it's new, it's strange, it's traumatic. Um, the children were used to attention and love from the mother or from the father, depending on who of them is the biological parent. Yes. Suddenly you now have uh, shared the attention with the a new father or a new mother who is not your biological. Yeah. So giving th children time, yeah, time, opportunities to, to appreciate each other, uh, to be civil to each other, to know you are now family, uh, would be important yes. rather than thinking it will happen automatically and then you're upset that's not happening.